Hi, I'm Ron Sandler, BaseballHQ.com, and I watch the Fantasy Sports Network. Hi, everybody. Lenny Melnick here. I'm beginning to feel a little bit like Marco Polo as I have another another one of the explorers, another one of the pioneers in Ron Chandler. Ron, it's just <laughs> great, man. We have come a long way, certainly, here as we sit in the FSTA meetings. Yeah, it's, uh, we're actually celebrating the 30th anniversary this year of the, the Green Book, the Rotisserie League Baseball book back yeah, in 1984. Right. So it's been three decades of doing this. Bill Mazarowski's magazine oh, and yeah. the whole thing, which by the way, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh -huh. But first I would ask you a question. Okay. All right, here's, here's my question, okay? Uh, what, uh, and I know you're baseball. Yeah. So this may this may throw you, I got a football question for you, uh, all I'm right? I'm not be able to answer no, this. this one, is yeah. football. Yeah. Football for Rod Chandler. Uh, you think I'm crazy? We'll see. Okay, what does Drew Brees and Nick Foles, the quarterback for Philadelphia, Brees is the quarterback for uh, New Orleans, yep. have in common with Ron Chandler and Lenny Mel? Oh gosh, yep. kids from Queens? Flushing Queens? Come on, Ron, <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> they went to the same high school. No way. <laughs> Did they and really? And they played against each other in the playoffs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, all right, so we have all something right. common with Breeze and Fultz. But not our high school. Uh, no, not our high school. Oh, well, that's what I thought. Okay, huh? but we didn't play baseball together, all right? Okay. But it's a high school that breeds fantasy baseball geeks. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so, all right, so on, on from France, <laughs> pretty good, huh? <laughs> So from Francis Lewis High School, there yes. we go, and okay. we finally meet years later in something called fantasy uh, rotisserie sports. Yes. And of course, you were a big factor and a big help uh, to me uh, early on. Uh, you got in. How did you get into the thing to start with? I actually got in through the Bill James path with uh, the sabermetrics and the advanced analytics, and I was doing. I was. I was a math geek. You know, I was this Queens math geek, and. Uh, I was my profession was projecting sales numbers for <laughs> corporations, so I was taking the the, uh, the the skills of projecting performance to baseball, and uh, suddenly uh, fantasy leaguers say, "Hey, that's good stuff," and uh -huh. so I sort of got in that way. Yeah, well, and from that way, uh, not just a hobby for this young fella, no. but this is a career. This yes. is somebody who's made a business and a career, and you know what? I give you so much credit for it, because what you have done, you know, early on, before the internet, before the internet, Bill Mazarowski, who, by the way, should be in the Hall of Fame for his magazine, not necessarily for his play at second base for the Pirates, or how he killed the Yankees, uh, had the greatest, and then Ron Chandler, all of a sudden I get this guy, Ron Chandler, who comes out with a book, and, and it's more than a book, it's it's a bible but it's a bible every it's a new bible every year could you believe that even the, even the greatest of the greatest can't come out with a new bible every year but this guy does yeah i mean the the baseball forecaster uh takes a look at all the players every year projects how they're going to do and uh over time we've just done all this research i mean it's been almost 30 years now and we've accumulated this what we call now an encyclopedia of, of research that fans leaguers can use to help identify players that are going to do well. And is it still the labor of love that you had back in the day? I mean, I know it's a business now, so yeah. it can't be the same, yeah. but still, is it a business? Can you really say it's, I know you bust your chops. You got deadlines and the whole thing. People don't show up, you know, things get lost. But I give you so much credit for taking something that you love to do, right? And make and make I wake up every day and say, we got to get the baseball forecaster out. Give me a break. <laughs> it's always been a labor of love. But, you know, as you get older, you slow down a little bit. I've got a lot of help now. And uh, I've got about 30 writers who help with the player commentaries and crunching the numbers and putting the book together. So I've yeah. got the help. But... Uh, it's still always a labor of love. And this is how the industry evolves. A magazine to a Bible. He even runs a day camp, okay? It's a day camp in November. You got the got the first pitch for him. I got to tell you, they got a bunch of old men, young guys, wherever we all sit there, we all talk baseball, we go to games, and we go home three days later, and we try to find, and the first thing we do is we call Ron, find out what is it gonna be next year? First pitch for him, what did you think of that? 
Uh, actually, that, that was started by Rick Wilton back in 94, the year of the baseball strike, actually. And uh, it's just it's just fun. Our, our original intent was just to get ourselves down there and make enough money to pay our way. And then eventually people started figuring out that it was a great chance to see up and coming prospects. And so we have this whole full blown three day conference. We have uh, seminar sessions and we have uh, actually fantasy drafts there. Uh, and we get to go to ball games. You know, we get to we got to see Albert Pujols before he was Albert Pujols. That's, that's you remember? right. Mike remember Trout when he didn't feel like playing. Right. And the whole thing. It's it's yeah, a it's great just... great opportunity to get to see the young players uh, and to see the young guys all, uh, as well. So here we go. So now here we're at a stage where uh, on on March fourth we are launching a fantasy sports TV network. That's way cool. Uh, is it cool, oh, man? it's way cool. You feel like like it's one giant step, or one I small, one like small this, step this, for man, one giant step uh, for we've man. We've been waiting for this forever. This is this is like 10 years too late. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. It's going, I'll tell you, it's going to be great. And I, I'll tell you something, you project, how does this, how do you think it's going to affect the industry? It's just going to make uh, fantasy more accessible to more people. I mean, People are visual, and there has never really been a visual medium to to spread the the information, the, the gospel about what a great hobby of this is. What a you know, for some people it's an obsession, but uh, it's just it's just so much fun, and, and the more people that get to see it, uh, the better. This is just it's just a great advancement. I'm really looking forward to it. And of course, a big part of the industry, as we have here, is we have the experts, we have the celebrity drafts, we got the whole thing. You know what I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to a celebrity draft on TV with one of the celebrities being Justina Shamba. <laughs> My daughter. How's that? <laughs> All right. Here's a guy. He's, he's promoted himself for years, and now I see he's promoting something else. What are you promoting? My daughter. Yeah. Oh, my kid, she's uh, she's a songwriter, and uh, she's been doing some great stuff. She's been out in L.A. Uh, writing for movies. She, she actually got a credit, an IMDb credit last summer, and uh, uh -huh. the kid's what, just turned 21, and uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch her progress. Well, when I do the Lenny Melnick story, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be choreographed, and it's gonna, all the music be by Justina Chandler. Oh, hey, buddy, thank you. Hey, thanks Appreciate so much. It. Ron Chandler, everybody.